Hi, it's me, Tim Dodd, the Everyday Astronaut. SpaceX is starting to release more and more pictures of their Crew Dragon capsule as they get closer and closer to finally testing it, hopefully at the beginning of 2019. And I just had this awesome question from Twitter user Joe Scabelli, who asks, what's the reason for the fins on the service module? Hmm. That's a great question, and this is one of those topics that's super fun uh, to dive into really quick because it's a cool demonstration of physics. Uh, so first I'm going to show you a spacecraft that you might be familiar with that has to address this with some fins already. Uh, then I'm going to show you a spacecraft that I think probably could use these fins. <laughs> and then um, I'm going to actually just whip up a quick Dragon capsule in Kerbal Space Program, and we're going to recreate exactly why, how, and what the mechanisms and the physics are behind this. So first off, what is going on here? Well, an object in flight wants its center of mass to be in front of its center of lift. So you can think of something like a dart, where if you throw a dart, no matter what, the pointy end is gonna go first because that's the heaviest part of the dart, and the fins are going to want to be in the back, and that's the center of lift or the center of drag. Speaking of pointy end first, of course, rockets are the same way. So a rocket, you want the, uh, typically want the pointy end going first. You might see some older rockets had some fins at the bottom of them, um, but also definitely model rockets oftentimes have fins at the bottom of the rocket, um, unless it's of course a Joe Barnard BPS space rocket that has a gimbal. But other than that, ignore that rocket. Um, all other model rockets will typically have fins to maintain stability and correct orientation. And that's why it points and continues to go pointy end first. So, although that's great for rockets, there is one part of the spaceship that you don't want to go pointy in first, and that's the capsule when it's coming back from re-entry. When a capsule comes back through re-entry, the heat shield is on the exact opposite side of the spacecraft as the pointy end. So therefore, we want it to go heat shield first. So the smart people who design these things design them in a way that's passively stable through re-entry, heat shield first. Okay, not necessarily designed that way per se, it's really more of an inherent property of the truncated cone shape like the capsules are. Uh, as a matter of fact, in the 1950s, Harvey Allen had to convince his colleagues at NASA that this was indeed the most stable design for a spacecraft, and it was also the best as far as re-entry heating goes as well. So that means that even if, say, it comes in crooked or, say, you don't have control and you can't keep it pointing heat shield first, Due to the physics, it'll basically, no matter what, passively come back heat shield first. And this is great. This is a really, really good thing. Unless you're trying to abort. So what happens if you're trying to abort from something? Well, then in general, uh, if you were just to abort straight off the launch pad with, say, a, a standard capsule, it would actually want to go heat shield first. And that's not necessarily the, the way the thing's gonna be pointing on the launch pad. Uh, if it's going heat shield first, it might end up shooting straight into the ground. So they have to be clever. So SpaceX isn't the only company that's ever had to deal with this phenomenon. As a matter of fact, a rocket and capsule that you're probably really familiar with also has something on it. And that's the Soyuz capsule. Have you ever noticed that the Soyuz capsule actually has grid fins on it? Yeah, that, that's right. Let me say that again. The Soyuz capsule has grid fins on it to keep it stable in the event of an abort. Now notice that they're folded up and tucked away on ascent, but if there would need to be an abort, that entire upper fairing comes along with the abort motors, those grid fins pop down, and that makes it so the center of lift is behind the center of mass. Now say those grid fins weren't there, it'd probably cause the center of mass to be awfully close to the center of lift somewhere in the middle of that fairing, and it would probably be very unaerodynamically stable. So, a couple grid fins just solve it perfectly. An almost identical version of this is also with India's space agency, the ISRO. Now, they're working on the Gagayan uh, crew capsule, which did an abort test on July 5th, 2018. And notice it has almost that exact same system, some grid fins, which again, keep that center of lift behind the center of mass. But now, a vehicle that I think probably could use some fins of some kind would be uh, Blue Origin's new Shepard. So we actually saw them do an in-flight abort test on October 5th, 2016 uh, with their new Shepard program right at max Q. They lit off the solid rocket motor uh, tr inside the capsule that is their abort system. And the capsule took off and actually 
uh, in an absolute feat of rocketry is really cool. The booster ended up still landing after having a, <laughs> a rocket engine uh, ignite on top of it. But that's another story. The crew capsule, meanwhile, took off. And at first it's, it maintained a decent amount of stability, but pretty quickly it starts to oscillate and swing back and forth and eventually even tumble. But this is an example of where it'd probably make it a little bit more stable ride and pointing continually in the right direction um, if it had some fins or grid fins or something that deployed out that kept the center of lift behind the center of mass. Now while we're looking at abort footage, let's not forget that SpaceX has already done a pad abort with their Dragon 2 capsule. They did this way back in May of 2015. And uh, you'll notice it, it, it went pretty well. There was... Um, it slightly underperformed. One of the Super Draco engines um, shut down, and when one does, the opposite one has to shut down as well. So it slightly underperformed, but it still made it out to its uh, to the ocean, basically, where it was safe, and it did what it needed to do. It passed. It was certified. And don't forget, in 2019, we're going to see them do an in-flight abort test, and that one's going to be crazy because they are going to detonate the Falcon 9 beneath it. Uh, so <laughs> I think that's going to be a launch I absolutely have to go see. Uh, you know, normally I always say scrubs are cheaper than booms, but in this one, uh, the boom is definitely going to be the, the showstopper on this one. Okay, I'm sure you have it all pieced together now why there's fins on the trunk of the Dragon Capsule. But just for fun, I gotta show you what I did in Kerbal Space Program that represents this absolutely perfectly. It's a great demonstration, so check this out. All right, welcome to Kerbal Space Program. Now I always say this is sort of like half game, half simulator, and 100% explosion factory. So I'm just playing back uh, a really quick build, a nice, quick, dirty build of the Dragon spacecraft-ish. Uh, it's obviously not going to be a perfect replica, um, but I'm attaching a few things like adding some fuel tanks and some basketballs here to the bottom portion of the uh, of the Dragon capsule. Now in real life, SpaceX really does have tanks, of uh, propellant tanks and like oxygen, all these things um, kind of in the bottom portion of the pressure vessel. Um, as you can see, maybe I'll, I'll pull up this video quick so you can see what that looks like when there's not a skirt around it. But here's what it looks like. I'm gonna pop the skirt on there kind of, and this is pretty close to a Dragon capsule. Now, of course, we still need to add those engines. And SpaceX actually has um, four different pods of Super Draco engines, but each pod has two Super Draco, so there's actually eight Super Draco engines on the Dragon 2. Uh, we're, th this is about the right amount of thrust, just having four of these engines. So it's not a perfect representation, but it's it's close enough. Uh, it's, it's representing what we need it to represent. Uh, but we're gonna do a few things here to this command module to make sure it acts kind of like how a crew command module would. And that first thing we did is turned off the control wheel, the um, the reaction wheel control authority. Because in real in Kerbal, the reaction wheel can steer and stabilize a spacecraft a lot, like way too much. In real life, uh, reaction wheels don't have nearly that much control authority uh, during ascent or any other time. So. So I turn that off completely so that we get the true passive effects of this vehicle. And the other thing I'm gonna do is turn off the gimbal of the engines. Now in SpaceX's case, the engines can steer the Dragon 2, and as a matter of fact, they can even make the Dragon 2 hover perfectly, um, maintaining its orientation perfectly using thrust differentials. So that's where they can throttle um, individual pods to maintain an orientation or guide it and point it and steer it in directions using thrust differential. Now Kerbal Space Program doesn't actually let us do thrust differential, but uh, this at least is a good demonstration of what would happen if the system was totally passive. And uh, yeah, let, I think you have a pretty good idea of how this is gonna end up. So let's just take it out to the launch pad as is and see how we do. Okay, and here we go. Three, two, one, and go. That, <laughs> see, like I said, this is exactly what you'd expect would happen. Uh, it's incredibly unstable. And yeah, that would not be a very good day for anyone. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stick on kind of a trunk here to the Dragon capsule. I'm just gonna use a structural tube here in Kerbal Space Program, an empty tube, and I'm gonna stick some of those uh, deluxe fins on there. And I'm gonna, you know, stick four of them. I'm gonna push them in quite a bit so that uh, they look right. But uh, one of the other things I'm gonna be doing here is I'm going to have they, they will still be able to spin or steer a little bit. Uh, obviously, in real life, SpaceX doesn't 
have any control authority using the fins. They're completely passive. Uh, but since I don't have thrust differential or any mod to use thrust differential in Kerbal Space Program, um, I will not be able to steer any other way. So I'm just going to use these to steer a little bit. Now here you can see the yellow ball is the center of mass. So that's where the weight is in the middle of the vehicle. And the blue ball is the center of lift. Now you would think that in general, uh, the center of lift in that looked like it was behind, but it's so close uh, in the standard capsule design that it's very unstable. Now by adding the trunk and these fins, you can see how much lower our center of lift gets compared to our center of mass. Now clearly the center of mass is well ahead of the center of lift. And this should be nice and stable. Let's check it out. Okay, here we go. Pad abort. Three, two, one, and go. Now notice you can see a little bit of RCS firing. Those don't really steer too much. The only thing that's able to steer a little bit, again in my case, is those fins. Uh, and they can steer just a tiny bit, but the, the big thing is notice that it's pointing the correct way the whole way through ascent here. And also, once that trunk is jettisoned, it instantly starts to flip and try to roll heat shield first. That's just, again, it's passive thing. And the craziest thing is, if we compare that side by side to SpaceX's pad abort, it is shockingly identical. So I think that's just showing how cleanly Kerbal actually represents the physics here. And that right there, ladies and gentlemen, is exactly why there's fins on the Dragon capsule. Now we're heading into the year 2019 where we're gonna finally see the crew Dragon capsule fly as well as Boeing CST-100 Starliner. Of course, I'll be doing a comparison video of them pretty soon, hopefully before uh, either one of them launches. But let me know what other questions you guys have about either one of those vehicles or about next year's commercial crew program. Or if you have any other questions that I forgot to talk about in this video, um, I hope it all makes sense. I just wanted to throw this thing together real quick for you. And don't forget, if you want to see more exclusive stuff and help support what I do, you can head on over to patreon.com slash everydayastronaut. Or if you want to check out my cool new merch, including shirts, hats, prints, mugs, uh, grid finata coasters, and lots of other fun stuff, head on over to everydayastronaut.com slash shop. And while you're there, make sure and click on the music tab where you can download and stream uh, all the music you've been listening to in this video. It's off my first album called Maximum Aerodynamic Pressure, which you can check out and listen to anywhere. Thanks, everybody. That's going to do it for me. I'm Tim Dodd, the Everyday Astronaut, bringing space down to Earth for everyday people.